Hi, and welcome to another edition of Cooking Chris's Dishes, where I, the good old boy, will be making recipes from RecipesThatCrock.com, which is my wife's cooking blog. And uh, you know how I keep telling y'all down in the comments below or to shoot us an email, tell us about the recipes that y'all want us to cook? We got a letter from a dear reader, and I'd like to read it for you at this time. It says, Dear good old boy, you know how y'all said to comment down below in the comments on your YouTube page at youtube.com slash MikeyGoo? <laughs> or to send y'all an email? Well, here I am sending you this letter that says that I love seafood. I like shrimp. I like crab. I like fish. I like anything that swims from the seas. And I would like for y'all to make something with shrimp and crab in it. Could you please do this for little old me? Love... Good old boy. That's right. Nobody sent us a letter. It's just the fact that if she's going to have me cooking these recipes, there's some things that I'm going to want to cook on here. And I've been harping on her for some time to find me a good recipe that you can make in a crock pot with seafood. And it just so happens, and I know we've told you about this before, the Busy Day Slow Cooker from Gooseberry Patch has such a recipe that you can use in your slow cooker. And this comes from a gal named Missy Abbott in Hickory, Pennsylvania, and it's called the Under the Sea Dip. Alexa, play. Again, only dance move I know. Under the sea. Alexa, stop! It's too loud. I'll be right back. Alexa, stop. Alexa has a mind of her own most days. Sometimes the technology is going to take over. <laughs> okay, we're going to check out Missy's recipe for an under the sea dip. And it goes a little something like this. You need one 10 and 3 quarter ounce can of cream of celery, any brains you like. A 10 and 3 quarter ounce can of cream of shrimp soup. You need two cups of, now she calls for cocktail shrimp that has been cooked. We're going to make this even simpler with some salad shrimp I that we have, see. that we got. A little bit of salad shrimp, great to put in a what salad. Is salad shrimp? Salad shrimp is shrimp that's so small you can put it in a salad, <laughs> I guess. And it's already peeled. And it's it already peeled. It. It's already deveined. No work to do other than open up the bag, dump out two cups into this, and it's done. And then you also need six ounces of canned crab meat drained and flaked. Now we are going to use imitation crab meat, yes. also new, known as surimi. Not sashimi. This stuff is cooked. Watch. We just pulled it out of the fridge, pulled out of the package. That's not sushi, folks. It's just surimi. Now, you're asking, dear good old boy, you just got through saying that you like seafood and you're going to use imitation seafood instead of real seafood. This is real seafood, it's just not real crab. You want to know why we're not using real crab? Because even though she compromised and let me do a seafood dish, I had to compromise with her. Why is that? Because we live in Indiana and getting fresh crab is not really an option and I don't like picking the shells out of the canned stuff. A lot of times your canned crab might have little bits of shells in it and... Well, shell just doesn't taste too good. So, I'll make the sacrifice. She won't. So, what we're going to do is we're going to use <laughs> surimi, the, uh, the imitation crab. And it works just fine. It's going to work just fine for this dish. And then you also need uh, two cups of shredded Monterey Jack cheese. We're going to use two cups of cheddar cheese. Put a little bit more of a bite in it. This is a four-state cheddar. We got cheddar from Wisconsin, New York, California, and Vermont. I have not been to any of these states. <laughs> Use whichever, whatever kind of cheese you want. If you want it from Monterey, too, you can get it from that state as well. And then, also, you need one-eighth of a teaspoon Monterey. of cayenne pepper. Monterey's not a state. I'm just kidding. I know this. It's a small country. It's not, it's not, just kidding. So, we are going to do it. You don't know Jack. Oh. 
That joke was cheesy. <laughs> so, we're going to start off by taking our soups. I thought you were supposed to spray Whoa. the ham. Hey, hey, hey. That's why you're there. Before you start putting your stuff in there, which will probably help this from sticking to the sides in case it starts to get a little burnt, take vegetable spray and spray the inside of your crock pot. And after that, you know why? You know why? Why? Because Missy said so. So, you take your soups and put in your pot. There's one can of cream of celery. And I've also got soup on the floor. I hope the dog likes cream of celery soup. One can of cream of shrimp soup. I never even heard of cream of shrimp soup before this recipe. Honey, we've used it before. Well, you didn't tell me. I would have remembered because I like it. I guess that's how you make a bisque or something like that too, huh? Mm -mm. Alright, one can of sh cream of shrimp soup. And then two cups of our cute little salad shrimps. Put that in there just like that. And then your six ounces of crab meat or surimi, imitation crab meat, whatever you dig, whatever you got. And then our two cups of Monterey Jack cheese or, or Wisconsin, Vermont, New York, and California cheddars. I bet they don't make any money with this. You know why? Because cheddars never prosper. Oh. Full of cheesy jokes today. I've got soup all over me. And then on the top, low cayenne. Our cayenne pepper. Not to be mistaken with Kanye pepper. Oh, no, no, no. Doesn't have near the flavor. And just put that right over the top. Add just a little bit of heat to it, a little bit of spice, but nothing that's going to burn you. Nothing you're not going to like. And then. Cover it and cook it on low, she says, for two to three hours. So cover don't, it. Those don't clip. Those don't clip. Cooking. I'm not clipping while I'm cooking. I'm not dusting that. And we'll put it on low. Alexa, please set an alarm for two hours. Two hours, Very starting cool. now. And the reason I'm not going the full three, I'm going to definitely want to check this in two because, as I'm about to show you. Well, you're going to want to stir it even before the two hours. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't, don't. Well, it, she says there's uh, cover and cook low. No, she does not. It's okay. But it's fine. But, but we've learned because we just made this recipe already so that we would have it ready to show you. And here's the thing about cheese and a crock pot. It's really good, it melts down really good, but let's say it gets too hot, it'll also burn your cheese, and it might get stuck to the pot, especially if you don't spray it down with a cooking spray. And if it stirs, if you start stirring and you start to feel like it's clumping up, if it's sticking to the sides, just kind of leave that part alone. I don't yeah, think it's gonna Don't happen. scrape the sides if cheese ever sticks, because then it'll ruin the whole dish, where if you just leave it stuck to the sides and stir around it and reduce your heat, Usually, you can save. Save what's left over. Save the cheese. And we're going to show you now. I'm going to go ahead and close this because you know it's recipes that crock.com. And if you don't, let me show you this t shirt I got. Michael. It says recipes that crock.com on the back. And how do you cook? How do you crock the pot on the front? You are not going to be allowed to wear that t shirt anymore. Can we take it off? No. Ha 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 ha. Oh boy. Just. Just kidding, ladies. That's not going to happen. It's not that kind of show. Are you going to move your cheesy? Yes, oven? I'm getting ready to. I'm just kind of getting some stuff out of the way. And I will close up the book. Let's get right there. And this has been cooked for a while. I'll heat it up. And again, like I said, you want to stir this every few, well, I'd say probably every 20 minutes or so if you can. This isn't one of those set and forget it and walk away recipes. You kind of need to check it. Because I can feel how some of that's stuck on the side. I don't mean like there's not like giant bricks of cheese stuck there, but you can feel on the side how some of it's stuck. And then another tip, if you have a slow cooker that tends to stick, like Dot has a hot spot. And you there's can a hot spot on Dot. <laughs> you can rotate 
the um, crock around, um, like show them how to rotate. How to rotate? My, the crock inside the unit. <laughs> no. uh, show them, like you can, tr oh my goodness. Um, even the oval slow cookers, you can still turn it. You find your hot spot. Once you found your hot spot, <laughs> it's right there. Just kind of. You can turn it. Turn your crock pot a little bit. You can quarter turn it or turn it. If it's an oval, you're going to have to turn it all the way. The only way thing you can't half. do is turn it upside down. Yeah, don't do that. Don't turn it upside down. Okay. Okay. So now I am going to get me. A plate. You told me you didn't need a plate. I don't need a plate because I want something pretty, to, something sophisticated oh to serve this in. So I want to be able to show them. You can see there's some crab, there's some shrimp coming up to the top there. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. You smell that? Mm, I know. It's like I'm getting everywhere. There's some of that screaming. It is. That's okay. That's okay, because it's good. And then you can use um, small, like, bread corners or anything like or if you want to. We're going to use pita bread. Pita chips. chips. Or, yeah, pita chips, anything. Crackers. I'm going to show you in this camera right here what this looks like. Isn't that pretty? It's like a little seafood sundae. Boy, oh, this is Saturday, so. <laughs> like a little, it's like an appetizer, perfect appetizer. <laughs> Triscuits. Triscuits will work. Mm-hmm. It's good. It's good, huh? Mm -hmm. To that I would add maybe just a little salt. For my taste, I like salty foods. Yeah, seafood, so you wouldn't think you need to add salt to it, but maybe just a little. Maybe if we use goat crab, we wouldn't need to add salt. <laughs> I like it a lot. Yeah, it is good. I get a piece of shrimp right there. A little bit shrimpy. I think that's probably your first bite didn't have seafood in it. Mm. No, second bite did. It was good. That'd make for a great party dip. I think so. Great appetizer. And I made a reader happy because I made a seafood dish for him. Granted, I was the reader, but I'm happy that I made a seafood dish. You can taste that cayenne pepper in there too. I was, it's got a lot of flavor to it. It does. It's got a lot of flavor. A lot of hey, the the imitation crab and the shrimp taste good in it, and then just that creaminess is really good. And it was really simple to make. Again, try not to burn your cheese. Quarter turn, half turn. Make sure you know where your hot spots are at on your slow cooker. We found Dot's hot spot today with this, but it's uh, it's still good. Got another one cooking, so we'll have appetizers for days with this. <laughs> I think but, you can uh, take that one into work, too. I think I will. Both of them, probably. Yep. But uh, we want to thank you guys again for watching another episode of Cooking Chris's Dishes with the good old boy. That's me. And if you like what you see, subscribe to our channel, youtube.com slash MikeyGood, and you'll get to see many, many more videos. And also, if you would, give us a like over on Facebook at Recipes That Crock, as well as Good Old Tunes with Good Old Boy. That's me. And there we do our recipes, as well as some cover tunes and other music and other fun things that the family likes to do. And again, just want to thank you. So uh, you keep watching, and we'll keep cooking, and all will be well. Bye. This is good. I wasn't sure if you liked it or not. I do. Even if it is with imitation crap.